Welcome to the Misfit One Lifestyles with Elizabeth Colon. She will awaken and connect with your Misfit One. Are you tired of the ups and downs in your life? Are you ready to live a healthy lifestyle once and for all? We are talking about all aspects of your life. Being fit is not just physical. It's also your mind and soul. Learn how to take steps in your life to move towards your goals. Elizabeth's goal is for everyone listening to the sound of her voice to get fit. Let's get focused, let's get intentional, and let's transform. Now here's your host, Elizabeth Colon. Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Misfit One Lifestyles with your girl, Elizabeth Colon, also known as Misfit One. And today's guest, bam, you ain't ready for this. You ain't ready for what's coming. But listen, Zinga Blake is in the house. And hey. say hey, girl, hey. Hey, girl, hi. <laughs> and you guys. Drum roll, drum roll. Taboo, boo, boo. Wow. How you doing? Thank you. First of all, thank you for allowing us to be part of this amazing show and this experience and to everybody that's that's tuned in and that will be tuning in. Um, this is an honor to speak to you, Elizabeth, Miss Fit, Queen Fit. Okay. Um, yep. There <laughs> I you need go. Some pointers. I need some pointers, Elizabeth. Hey, yeah. <laughs> Listen, girlfriend, this is 50 years of, you know, this is 50 years of doing this. This ain't brand new. I'm true. Yeah. Mm. Okay, we need to take a moment and just give you your flowers for, first of all, the 50 glow. Hello. Please. Thank Beautiful. you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. But listen, okay. we got so much to talk about today. First of all, I got questions. And, you know, um, since we both have you here, I want to take a little time for Zinga to say a little bit about her and her story so they know who you are. Tell them who you are, baby. Oh my goodness, where did where do we even start with that? Um, my name is Zinga Blake, and I am a race and culture executive producer over at ABC owned television stations. Um, we are part of the Disney family. Very, very proud to be part of the Disney family. And yes. I absolutely love, love, love my job because I get to do these incredible projects and work with incredible people like Taboo. And, you know, honestly, as part of the race and culture content team, inclusive storytelling, our whole ethos is about shining a light and amplifying voices that have been historically a marginal, that have been historically marginalized, underrepresented, even at some points excluded in mainstream media. And so we get to bring some incredible stories to life with beautiful people from various communities all over the, the, the country. And so it is my honor and distinct pleasure to be able to, to do this work. Oh, man, that's just awesome. Because when I was doing my research, I was kind of stalking you, but not really stalking you. You understand what I'm saying? Like, I just want to get to know more and more and more of you. And I am just like blown away because this is so necessary. It's not like, you know, we watch TV and not really think about what we've seen. You know, think of our age. We've watched TV since we was little and they didn't have really people like us. Mm -mm. There was nobody to look like, but we still watch TV. Mm hmm. Right. Yep. And for you to make that conscious effort to have us represented <laughs> is and our voice, our story, our everything is just profound and so needed. So I thank you for that. I really do. Because, listen, you know, I'm, I'm a little chocolate girl with locks in my head, like not, <laughs> you know, not the ones you yeah. can take out. This is right. so, it's a lifetime. It's a lifetime. Yeah. So I can't be anything but who I am. You know right. what I'm saying? Yes. Yeah. And I appreciate that, that you give us that voice, that representation. And I am so excited about your new project that you guys are working <laughs> on. But before we do that, let's talk about uh, Mr. Taboo. Everybody know you, but tell the people. Tell the people. <laughs> Um, so, um, my name is Jimmy Gomez, a.k.a. Taboo Nawasha. I am a husband. I'm J Jamie's husband. I'm a father of four wonderful children. 
Um, I have a 30 year old, a 13 year old, an 11 year old, and a six year old. Wow. I'm very proud. Amazing. I, 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 let's just get that at the forefront of who I am and what makes me the person that I am today. So, as a uh, father, um, I've been blessed to be able to create um, in the animation space, in the kids space. I wrote a kids book about identity. Um, I've worked on Marvel Comics. I'm a, a Marvel comic writer. Um, I'm also doing uh, toys and merchandising. Um, but my day job is I am one of the founding members of the group Black Eyed Peas. <laughs> and I say that humbly. I say my day job. Legendary. <laughs> I know, like, what? The Black Eyed Peas? Yeah. I yeah, know. yeah. So, um, you know, I've been very blessed uh, in my career, 25 years in the music industry, to be able to meet amazing people, amazing uh, visionaries, matriarchs like Zynga. Zynga is an amazing force to be reckoned with as a director, <laughs> as a producer, as a visionary. And her leadership um, and her guidance in this project was something that I, I cherish and I'm proud to be part of this family, this Disney family with her. Um, I used to work at Disneyland in 1994 and 95 as a custodial worker, picking up horse uh, menorah after the electrical parade. So I was dealing with a lot of crap back then, ladies and gentlemen. I was dealing with a lot of bull ish <laughs> back then. I don't know if I could cuss. I want to say another yes, word, but... Hey, you in the same spot. This is what we do. I was dealing with a lot of shit, horse shit back then. And while... Uh, still trying to pursue my dreams with the Black Eyed Peas in 1995 when we started the Peas performing in Los Angeles. Um, but I always had a special place for the work ethic, the um, the corporate structure that Disney uh, um, allowed me to learn from um, so that I can really uh, hone in my craft, not only as an entertainer or a talent, but also as a businessman and understanding the inner workings of corporate structure and going into these meetings and understanding that there's two worlds and two conversations and knowing the right people to activate and to really engage with. And Zynga has been one of those allies and one of those relatives that has really taught me a lot about the game uh, in this world, in this space, uh, especially with the project we created. Um, it's, it's our America reclaiming Turtle Island, and I'm very proud as a Native American Mexican kid from East L.A. She brought so much awareness to our communities, and we're very honored to show the world what we, what we created. Listen, I am as well. Thank you so much for that, because um, I also, you know, Native American. Ooh, and um, yes, I was literally on... Um, Indian reservation raised with my grandparents. So it's wow. like, this is important to me. And I am like, I said before, I can't say it enough. Mm -hmm. I'm ecstatic about this, <laughs> like ecstatic. And our America reclaiming Turtle Island. Tell us what it's about. What are we looking for? What we, can we expect? So, um, our, we, again, so fortunate to be able to just even be a part of this project. Uh, Our America Turtle Island is an hour-long documentary series that brings to life. Hold on, wait for it. I know that this is a podcast, but we might see. You might see. The event, you see it. It brings to life this incredible issue, National Geographic issue that came out this July, and it focused on the issue of native sovereignty, which is something that is not widely known, right? You talk about sovereignty, people are like, that's nice, what does that mean? <laughs> I was just about to say, and can you do that? Can you tell them what it means just because people saying it right now? They're like, I've had, what that, what that mean? Right, so I'll give you the definition, but I also want, I want it in Taboo's voice, being from the community, I think it's important for him to talk about what native sovereignty is, but from the standpoint of like, you know, how National Geographic um, uh, framed the this narrative is native so sovereignty is the inherent authority of American tribes to govern themselves and honor and preserve their cultures and traditions. Now, everybody has their own definition. So I would love, of course, for us to give Tab the floor to explain what it means to him. So uh, being a kid from Los Angeles, uh, growing up in the city, I'll, I'm known as an urban native or a city native. 
um, because I grew up uh, understanding the Mexican culture of Los Angeles, the Mexican American culture of Los Angeles, but also through my grandmother's eyes and her her guidance and her, her matriarch ways, I was able to really understand the beauty of our tribal communities, being Hopi and Shoshone. Uh, my grandmother's from Jerome, Arizona. She talked to, my, to me about Indian boarding schools, which I had no idea. Uh, until I started doing my research and my due diligence and really understanding what the Indian boarding school situations were all about. Uh, basically, uh, we were getting stripped away of our culture. Our hair was getting cut. Our, our language was getting taken away. Our regalia, if we wore regalia from the north or if we wore southwestern um, attire uh, from Arizona to New Mexico, we were getting that stripped away, even in Canada. And basically, we were getting these treaties that were not necessarily honored, um, but we started understanding the beauty of our culture and what so sovereignty meant to each tribe, because we have so many different tribal communities, and how we can reclaim our culture, reclaim our language, and hold on to the beautiful thing that is agriculture, that is creativity, that is powwow style dancing, that is music, that is art, that is expression. And so that's where I come in. It's like, as an artist, like I live, I'm a conduit of my grandmother's inspiration. I'm a beacon of her yeah. hope and her light. That's if it so wasn't awesome. for my grandmother putting that emphasis on like her, the, the pride and the beauty of our culture, I would have never understood my path as a voice. And I don't speak for all of us. I just speak as one of us. And that's from the right. heart. Right. That's from the heart. So I'm very passionate when I speak about this because it's something that needs to be heard. I don't think I've, I've done that enough with the Black Eyed Peas. I think because of the makeup of our group, we're all very multicultural. But at the end of the day, I'm very proud to be the Native American Mexican representing from the Peas that has a huge megaphone that speaks to millions and millions of people around the world and always ask the question, where's the love? While I'm bringing the love and talk about sovereignty within our communities and communities around the world. Ah, oh. drop mic. Serious. That was it. Yes. You, you sign up. Because let me tell you, that is exactly how it is. I was raised with that culture. Mm. Um, mm. We we killed down animals. We uh, ate everything off of it. We grow. Um, like, we was doing all those things. And I am still that nut. I talk to the uh, flowers and the plants mm -hmm. and the animals. And I feel I am one with nature. My husband um, thinks I'm crazy, but he wasn't raised like I was raised, like the respect of nature, the respect of the animals, you know, and it's, we all are one. We are all the same because we are, earth is our home. Yes. Nature is our home. And we are just like a speck of dust, right? So it's just really important that we all recognize that. Yeah. And, and it's beautiful. Sorry to interrupt, Elizabeth. What you no, said is so ahead. profound um, because I'm learning myself. I said it in the documentary. I don't know everything about being Native and I don't ever uh, claim to be an expert. I'm not a, a Native right. expert. Right. But what I do know is that I'm a student of life and I like to educate myself and really put my best foot forward on gaining as much information wow. and, and knowledge of self when it comes to my connection to my roots and my ancestry, because that's valuable to me. I want right. to leave a legacy for my kids, not just a catalog of music. You know what I'm saying? Right. Because yeah. it's, oh. real, it's, it's real when our kids can, can appreciate the identity of who they are. My, my wife's Filipino, I'm Native and Mexican, so they have this beautiful mosaic of cultures that they represent and they learn about. So um, that's something that's very important. And, and I learned a lot about the landmines and the protocol that a lot of tribal communities may have for folks that are, you know, reconnecting with their roots like me. That's a, a city native or an urban native right. that didn't grow up like, you know, on the res. Um, but, on but it's something that I, I empathize. I'm respectful and I'm very mindful going into these conversations and make sure that I'm that I'm always transparent and from the heart, because that's the that's the way I will always approach it. Like, I don't know the answer to everything but right. i'm willing to learn and learn. educate myself yeah and i i haven't done the best either i kind of took it for granted because i was raised that mm -hmm. way so you know i never really 
you know, pass it on. And it's crazy because I still get that little check from my little Indian thing. You know, it's like two dollars, you know, but you still get it because you got because there's so many of us in our tribe. But what's crazy about it is that my kids appreciate it, you know, and they my oldest really, you know, he's really like, yeah, I, I want to use it for my education. I want to, you know, for all these things. But when we get to the documentary mm-hmm. and we're talking about it, you know, reclaiming Turtle Island. What is Turtle Island? <laughs> <laughs> we're standing on it. You know, that was to me. I was so blown away. Um, I, I, uh, well, let's again, having the honor and pleasure of working with a legacy brand like National Geographic when um, Adrian Anderson, our senior vice president, brought this project to us and said, we need to do something with this. This is beautiful. It's so important. Um, shout out to her leadership. Um, you know, I, I, I went and I read the whole, you know, article. And so I was like, Turtle Island? Turtle? Really? I had no idea North America was an indigenous, like common in indigenous term for, for you know, uh, Turtle Island. Turtle North Island, America. yeah. Turtle Island is North America. So, you know, okay, I guys. still have about that too. <laughs> that like, is craziness. I didn't know that. So yeah. I, have, I have Turtle Island uh, tattooed on my, my right hand because my right hand is my powerful fist. So Turtle Island for, for folks that may not know for tribal communities of North America and Canada mm-hmm. represents the shape of what North America looked like from, if you above. were if you had satellites mm-hmm. and you could see from, from above, North America was shaped like a turtle, right? That's just, that was the vision of what North America, before it became United States of America, <laughs> this bitch was known as Turtle Island. Turtle Island, come on, like that's a, from my own, Y'all, I'm telling y'all right here. <laughs> yes. I'm going to say I'm from Turtle Island. Turtle, Turtle Island. Island. And, and pe- people that, that are connected to, um, to the communities and mm-hmm. that really understand the uh, connection to the past and the ancestors, Turtle Island resonates with all of us, you know, because we, United States is a, uh, with all due respect, it's a colonized place. And I don't want to get deep, but we can get deep because we're talking about National Geographic. Colonization brought these words, systemic racism, divide, uh, separation. It brought it, right? Colonialism brought that. It brought yeah, religion, yeah. which I get, I understand. But at the end of the day, it took away the, 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 the idea that Turtle Island was something that indigenous communities um, saw as the name of this place. Mm-hmm. And so United States of America became the government name and what what the westernized settlers created as what we know as the US of A. Man. Right? I'm, I mean, my mouth was like wide open. I had to say, shut your mouth, little girl, shut your mouth. You know, mm-hmm. your mama said, close your mouth. Because I'm like in shock mm-hmm. because I never knew that. There's a lot of things that you're gonna learn about in this documentary. I mean, like when is the documentary airing? It's, well, it's, it's out November eighteenth, right, or something like that. Yeah, okay. well, no, it's 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 streaming now. You, it's available across our platforms. If you go to reclaimingturtleisland.abc, and of course, Hulu. Hulu. <laughs> Yo, can I also say this one more thing? Mm-hmm. So, so one of the things that, that I love that she said, I didn't know what this was. Right? They don't teach that in. Oh. They don't teach that at schools. They teach you about Thanksgiving, which is a total lie, ladies and gentlemen. Facts. Facts (laughs) facts. Ladies and gentlemen, a total lie. It's a total lie. It's not what it was. It's uh, it's um, I don't want to get political. This is not a political thing. This is just reality of me as a tribal voice. Yes. And I think that we have to get out of this mindset of of saying that these conversations are political. This is history. This is history. history. Yeah. You so know? so I, what I was going to say was, um, so at in school, the first thing that you're taught is the Pledge of Allegiance. So in L.A., where I'm from, I am trying to get with the Los Angeles Unified School District so that we can have a land acknowledgement before you do the Pledge of Allegiance. And for mm-hmm. those that don't know what a land acknowledgement is, it's when you honor the first 
people of this place, wherever you're sitting from. If you're in LA, it's Tongva, it's Angeline, um, Tongva, it's Gabrielino and Chumash. Those are the tribes that were here in Hollywood, in downtown, in Los Angeles. So before you do the Pledge of Allegiance, I would like a land acknowledgement for the First Nations people of this land. Well, let's see how that goes. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we, we, we actually- trust me, trust me. Anything is possible. And I'm a cancer I survivor. It. I'm a so, cancer survivor, uh, uh, Elizabeth. Check this out. I beat cancer in 2014, and that was the biggest demon that I've ever faced in my life. Mm. This is facts upon facts. So this when I battled this horrible demon that was me battling mortality, mm. I said to myself, I will never allow any type of obstacle that is not out of con- not a, 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 you know out of my control or I, I can't it can't be attainable. That's Shit. no such thing as can't be attainable. You it, can do exactly. it. Yeah. yeah. So I'm sorry to hear that you had cancer. And you're on the Misfit One lifestyle. So this is where all this comes in. And I, I love the fact that you said how you beat it. Because oh, yeah. I battled and beat it. Yeah. Oh, man. It was it was ancestors coming through through uh through my body, all the thing that was very bad that the chemotherapy was trying to kill, killed my spirit, but killed the, the, the tumor. But I fought a fought, fought a hard fight and I'm here and I have a higher purpose. And I think this frequency that I'm on is something that creator allowed me to channel through my grandmother's grandmother's guidance to be a beacon of light and inspiration to not only tribal communities, but underserved communities to, to kids that want to, um, you know, learn how they can activate and prevent cancer because it's preventable. And that's just a conversation. Yeah. And and I I would love to have that conversation with you because my mom died of breast cancer when I was 11. Um, And my dad just got diagnosed with cancer two months ago. I'm sorry. Uh, in his bladder. So it's it's a real hot thing. And the reason I got into the career I am is because of cancer. Mm. It was like killing my family. Like my family, everybody died basically from cancer, right? Yeah. So I wanted to know what can we do to prevent it, what we could do. And of course, you know, the first two things is eating what we eat right. and how we move our bodies. So I was all in. That's why I'm a nutritionist and a personal trainer when I started off because I wanted to know what we can do and it is preventable it is something that we can fight and battle and like you said kick his ass yeah Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but before we move on i gotta know how you got your name then mr uh Taboo. <laughs> so, so taboo was the lifestyle that I was living when I was a teenager. In my neighborhood, it was like you were either down with the Mexicans or you were down with the Asians. And I wasn't about like separation because mm-hmm. I had Filipino friends. I had black friends. I had uh, Asian friends, Mexican, Puerto Rican friends. So I was living a taboo lifestyle in my neighborhood. I had a black girlfriend, which I didn't see as color. I just saw like, yo, if I love a black girl or Asian girl or Filipino girl, it's just love, right? Right. So the, the taboo moniker or whatever title kind of started becoming that thing of like, well, if I'm living a taboo lifestyle, well, maybe I am taboo, right? And then Taboo Nawasha is my full name. Taboo Nawasha is my native name that I created, and it's Spirited Warrior. I love it. Yeah. I love it. I love it. And you are a warrior. Thank that, you. That yeah. is known. Like, is no doubt about it. You know, you can say a lot of stuff about a lot of people, but I'm saying it right here. It's facts. I feel it. I have, you see, goosebumps because mm-hmm. not only I know I hear the truth in your voice, I feel your spirit. Everybody's listening today. I know is doing the same. Mm. Yeah. Thank you. That, that's, that's my grandmother. And, and if you watch the... the if you watch the documentary, you'll see how much I praise my grandmother because she was she was my everything. She was my superhero, Elizabeth. She was my my everything. You know, she was she was more, more deadly than Bruce Lee, more athletic than Michael Jordan, more more of a killer than Kobe Bryant. She was everything to me. She was um, more amazing the, than the amazing Spider-Man. Oh, my God. I love it. I love it. I'm telling you. Yeah. My grandbaby to think the same things about me, mm. that, you know, and she's two. My grandbaby's two, and I'm Yaya. Yep. Yaya. That's awesome. 
Beautiful. <laughs> so, yeah, I, I, I want that. And I feel the same way. My family, there's nobody on TV or in the movies or whatever that is more inspiring and inspiration than my own family. Mm. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, when they ask you, who, what movie star? I'm like, mm. I mean, I, I like them, but who I want to be like when I grow up, who, you know what I mean? It's, yeah. it's amazing. And so our America reclaiming turtle islands is streaming on Hulu. That's right. And we can watch it now. You can yeah. watch it now. Yep. And it, it, on all of our connected television apps, like I said, if you, for those of, you know, who, of you who don't have Hulu, which I highly suggest you get, um, you can also, because it's all about access. So we want to make sure everybody has access. You can go to reclaimingturtleisland.abc and also stream it there. Awesome. And, and you know, you on the platform, I'm going to ask. Yeah. When we think of our ancestors, you could say, you know, how did they live? How did they take care of themselves? How was their well-being when it was so crazy and chaotic? But they actually had it much simpler than we did now. Right. You know what I'm saying? So I'm going to start with you, Zena. How is your morning? What does your morning look like? We're doing all these things. You are a busy woman. You are really out here changing lives my whole platform is about living fit focus intentional and transforming and that is exactly who the two of you are i love that so in order for you to do all those things how do you start your morning how do you take care of you you know i love that question so much i'm a spiritual person i believe um i actually start my i i i, I start every morning in prayer I do. Um, Me too. I start every morning giving thanks, and I end my day giving thanks, and I do that with my daughter as well, um, especially in the evening because I think it's very important for these children um, nowadays that are living in this world of social media and they're continuously comparing themselves to others. I need her to be centered in just just being thankful for what she has. Mm. And so I, and that's, that's how I center myself um, in the morning because this is such, I, I find this work that I do a lot, a huge responsibility. Mm-hmm. I do ask for guidance and I do ask that every single, every single story that we do, I, 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 that's what I ask for. Please let me, I hope we get this right. I hope the, the right questions are answered. Most importantly, we bring people into the conversation. Like I didn't, just come up with our America Reclaiming Turtle Island. This was a collaboration because I had to ensure that the people that were being, you know, the people who were telling their stories like Taboo, I had to speak with Taboo first. I had to speak with Juana and Jody, all the people that were involved, the Jemisons. I had to ask them first, do you even like this title? How do you feel? What do you want to talk about? Remember, Tab, when we first talked, it wasn't even like, oh, I want to tell this. No, it wasn't that approach. Yeah. You you kind of gave me an outline and you wanted to take my perspective and you were empathetic about what what I would say, you yeah. know, and how would I what would approach this project? Because you never know. Some people might be like, well. I don't know. It's a little too sensitive for me or I don't really know too much about it. You know, it's it just you, you, these are the situations that you may run into. But I love what you said, Zinga, about yeah. about your daughter. It's beautiful. Because it's true. It's true. Um, you know, and first of all, since you said social media, yeah. how can we stay connected with you guys? Oh, <laughs> Oh, and you. and the project as well, because that I'm definitely going to be, listen, as soon as I get off, I'm watching it. Like, I'm just saying it right now. Thank you. Thank you. Well, I'm sure so many people know Tab and Black Eyed Peas. <laughs> you can you can follow them all, all on social media. I love following Tab. He's so much fun. Awesome. Um, I, love, I love that the Peas also have given us so much love. Um, please thank them for me for the support. Of course, definitely. Um, yeah, and you can just find me on by my my name, um, Zinga Blake, N Z I N G A B L A K E at, at Zinga Blake. 
on awesome awesome yes and before we wrap it up we want to close with you know you telling us mr boo Mm -hmm. how do you start your days sure so i i'm a i'm a proud as i told you since the beginning i'm a proud father so i start my days um getting my daughter ready then my two sons they have the 10 minute warning because they're (laughs) they're like the 10 minute warning guys uh, my 13 year old and my 11 year old. So I, I kind of let them have their moment because they're teenagers. And so we start our day with breakfast. Uh, we'll do some spelling because my daughter's uh, doing spelling words now. She's starting to spell and, and getting in that zone. Yo, I'm a dad, ladies and gentlemen, and I'm speaking to all everyone. Facts yeah. upon facts. At the end of the day, when I take off my black IP cape, I'm just dad. I'm just <laughs> his husband. And that's the reality. <laughs> No shame in my game. I am proud. I am proud to be able to take my kids to school, be present, be available, uh, be attentive, and and actually be part of their lives on a daily basis. Because with my older son, I was traveling and touring. Mm -hmm. So my son is now 30 years old, Josh, my first son, who I had from a previous relationship. So he didn't get the same version of me because I was always uh, sacrificing being away so that I can give my son a better life. Yeah. Unfortunately, it was, um, you know, a lot of time went by, but, but I got to say that I owe this all to my wife. My wife is my rock. She is the matriarch of this family, just like my grandmother was the matriarch of my family. And I love her leadership and, and being able to ping pong with her about how we raise our children and how we take care of our household and take care of not only our bodies, but our mind. Because it's one thing to be fit physically, yes. but if you're not taking care of your mental health, because mental health is a really big thing, ladies and gentlemen, and it's something that we sometimes sweep under the rug and we look we look away from therapy. I love therapy. I'm, I'm proud. I'm proud to be not only working out, dancing, staying fit, but also taking care of my mentals because of the, the career that I've chose comes with a lot of baggage, a lot of baggage. This entertainment business is crazy. Yeah. So you would be tripping if you said, I don't really need professional guidance. Hey, I'm all about that. I'm all about holistic healing. I'm all about speaking to a therapist that can help me deal with my issues and my layers and unpack all this craziness that's going on up here so that I can really take care of myself 360 and and be a better version of what I was yesterday and continue to grow and be a better version so that my kids will always be inspired by the growth of their parent. Yes. Ah, that's, that's, I mean, that's like the best ending ever. You guys, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you so much for taking time out today and speaking to us. And listen, I know we have all learned so much and can't wait to watch the video. We're going to be all on it to learn (laughs) even more. We really appreciate you. Thank Thank you. you. All right, guys, until next week, live fit. I hope you enjoyed this episode of Misfit One Lifestyles. Listen, when you are fed up and sick and tired of living this stifled, overwhelmed, and overstressed life, and you're ready to live the fullest, richest, and healthiest life by gaining more confidence, more energy, and more clarity, living in your best self, you know what to do, right? Go ahead, go to my website, misfitone.com. Sign up for our online courses, Creating Healthy Habit, so that you too can live fit, focus, move with intention, and transform your life.